Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. I want to remind you again that this Saturday, May 21st at 6.30 p.m. is our next Victorious Faith Seminar in North Denver in Thornton. We will be meeting again at the Holiday Inn Express and Suites on the northeast corner of 120th Avenue and Grant Street. That's one block east of I-25. And so that's this Saturday, May 21st at 6.30 p.m. in Thornton at the Holiday Inn. And so I hope to see you there. Come and bring a friend. Also, I want to mention again what I said yesterday, just to remind you that as we are studying this lesson on pride and humility, God has put it in my heart that this should also become a book because actually God has directed me already that all of these subjects will be published in books. And so as I've been going through this one, God has put it in my heart to make this also a book. Now, I don't know when it will be. Um, it's not going to be in the next six months. I know that. Um, there are other books actually to come first, but it will come. And as I was thinking about it, I thought, I'm not sure yet how to give this book a title. And so if you have any ideas for a good title, for a book about pride and humility. And the reason I say that is because if you just say pride and humility, it's kind of like taking medicine. You think, ugh, I don't want to do that. You know you need it, but you don't really like it. And yet, as you've been listening to this, you probably have felt that this has been very good for you. It has been beneficial. It has helped you to be a better person. And yet I don't know how easy it would be for somebody to pick up a book that's just called pride. And so therefore to think of a title that actually makes this subject exciting or interesting or desirable, captivating. And so it draws people to think, Oh, I need that. I want that. I want to buy this book. So if you have any ideas like that for a title, for a book about pride and humility, that would make this study make somebody want to read it, then I would um, love to have your ideas and suggestions. If you have any ideas, just write to me. You can write to me in three different uh, methods. You could go to my website and that's at victoriousfaith.co and go to the contact us page, or you can send me an email. That is for many of you the easiest My email address is info, I-N-F-O, at victoriousfaith.co, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S-F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, C-O like Colorado, info at victoriousfaith.co. Or if you want to write to me by postal mail, you can write to me by mail, by letter, and write to Victorious Faith at P.O. Box 1418. That's 1418. Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104. And so I don't know. I mean, like I said, this is months down the road from now before I will even begin to work on it as a book. But because it's fresh in your mind right now, as you're listening to it, as it, as it ministers to you, Perhaps there is a thought that you have about how this title, this subject is exciting or interesting, captivating, enjoyable, desirable. And so those kind of ideas are ideas that I'm looking for and I'm bringing it to your attention now because we are currently studying it and it's in your mind. So I would appreciate any ideas that you would have, any suggestions you might come up with, and I'll be praying over it. I do believe God has the perfect title. The Holy Spirit will reveal it. So praise God. I believe that. I expect that. That's the way I do. Everything is expecting God to give the directions. Hallelujah. Now, yesterday... In our study on pride and humility, we finished the characteristics of pride that we had talked about for the last three or four weeks. 
Characteristics of Pride. So if you missed yesterday's program, we finished those yesterday. And you can go to my website. Again, it's victoriousfaith.co. Go to the radio broadcast archives. And then you can listen to those radio programs. We finished those. And then we started talking about reasons why we need humility. And again, some of this is review. Some of this is new and expand, expanding what we've already talked about. And so yesterday in the reasons why we need humility. Number one, we said, because pride causes the fall and pride separated man from God. Therefore, humility is the only thing that can bring you back to God. Humility is the only thing that can bring you back to God. Humility is the prerequisite for salvation. You must acknowledge and admit your need for God, your need for his help, his mercy and his salvation. And you must acknowledge your sin. That requires humility. Then number two, we said it's because walking in love is the New Testament commandment. If you walk in love, you have fulfilled the law. The New Testament commandment, number one, is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That requires humility to love God more than yourself and to submit and obey God. And then to love your neighbor as yourself requires humility. Walking in humility is walking in love. And vice versa, walking in love is walking in humility because pride is selfish Selfishness is the opposite of love. So humility is the opposite of pride. When you walk in love, you are loving your neighbor. When you walk in humility, I mean, you are loving your neighbor. You're putting them first. You're not doing anything that would hurt them. So walking in humility is is walking in love. And that is the fulfillment of the New Testament commandment. And then number three. We were on yesterday before we closed. The degree of your humility determines your usefulness to God. The degree of your humility determines your usefulness to God. If you're proud, God cannot use you. Not only can he not use you, but again, as we have read in previous scriptures, James 4, 6 says, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And as we said before, the uh, Wiest translation says he sets himself in battle array against the proud. But God gives grace to the humble. And we've talked about what is grace. Grace is God's free gifts to you. That includes knowledge, wisdom, finances, health, strength, and anointing, and giftings, and talents, and ability and empowerment to do something. It is all his grace. By his grace, you get the ability to do something. You get the empowerment. You get the knowledge. You get the wisdom. You get the strength. You get the finances to do whatever you do and everything you do is because God has given you everything you needed to do it. And so he gives grace to who? To the humble. He gives empowerment to who? To the humble. He gives anointing to who? To the humble. He gives uh, the finances, the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge to do things for him to who? To the humble. So therefore being humble is a very big requirement to receiving from God gifts, anointings, abilities, empowerments, wisdom, knowledge, finances, health, strength, energy to do things for God. And so you have to. To receive his grace. But God only gives grace to the humble. If you are proud, God cannot use you. And just before we close yesterday, I read to you scripture in Numbers 
12, 3, Numbers 12, 3 about Moses. It says, Moses was very meek above all the men of the earth. He was the meekest man in all the earth. Do you know why God chose Moses? Because he was meek. Moses became the most powerful man in all of Egypt and Israel. Two countries, two nations, and Egypt was the most powerful nation in the world at that time. That was the most powerful nation. That was the biggest empire, you could say, that we have record of at that time, at least, you know, in that part of the world. And it was the most powerful nation and Moses became the most powerful man in both Egypt and Israel. Why? Because he was meek. God was able to exalt Moses to great power because he was the meekest of all. He was the meekest of all. You remember even when Miriam and Aaron opposed Moses, God defended Moses. And Miriam became leprous. She got leprosy because she dared to oppose Moses, the man of God, the man God speaks to face to face. Moses did not defend himself before Miriam and Aaron. As a matter of fact, when Miriam got leprosy, God judged her and she got leprosy. Who was it that interceded for her? Moses did. Moses pleaded with God on her behalf. And then God lifted his judgment. She would still have to be outside the camp for seven days to become clean. But he lifted that judgment because Moses interceded for her. If he was proud, he wouldn't have interceded for her. She would, he would have said, she deserves that. How dare she come against me? You know, that's the way pride acts. But humility doesn't say you deserve that. Humility pleads with God. God have mercy on them. Remember, pride wants to call fire down, as some would say, or judgment down on other people. But humility has mercy. Lord, don't judge them. Have mercy on them, Lord. Humility says have mercy on them. Do not judge them for what they have done. Have mercy on them, Lord. Humility intercedes for other people and calls for God's mercy. Whereas pride calls for God to judge and bring judgment on others. Bring down fire from heaven, as the disciples said at one time, to consume them. No, you don't want to call for God's judgment on other people. Because actually, remember, we talked about your words will reciprocate And boomerang back to you when you have called judgment down on somebody else, you have called judgment down on yourself. You don't want to call judgment down on from heaven, because if you call judgment down on somebody else, you have called judgment on yourself. Your words boomerang to yourself reciprocate. You get what you've said, what you have declared over somebody else. You will get it yourself. So you don't want to do that. You want to say, have mercy on them so that mercy reciprocates back to you. Praise God. So humility does not call judgment. Humility calls for mercy. And that was Moses, a very meek man. He had mercy on Miriam and God used him and he, God exalted him to be the most powerful man in two nations, Egypt and Israel. When you run out of humility, you run out of grace. When you run out of humility, you run out of grace. Humility, and we're still on the same point here. The degree of your humility determines your usefulness to God. Your humility also determines the level of your anointing. Because as soon as a a person with a strong anointing, if they get lifted up in pride, they will fall and then they lose that anointing. Now, that anointing can rest for them for a period of time. It's called the period of grace. 
thank God for grace. We all, we get periods of grace to come to repentance. But if there is no repentance in that period of grace, then the anointing is removed. And so we need humility to receive anointing. In Ephesians 5.24, there is a short phrase in the middle of the verse, as the church submits to Christ. And I want to point out this submission to Christ. Yes, that's submission to Jesus. It's submission to God. But also Christ refers to the anointing power of God. And so you have to submit The church must submit to God and to obedience to God and to obedience to the anointing. So you have to humble yourself to flow in the power of God, to receive the power of God, to receive the anointing of God. You must humble yourself. And so the degree of your humility also determines the degree of your anointing. Then let's go on to another one. Number five, I think it is in God's kingdom. The way up is to humble yourself. The way to be promoted is to humble yourself. Proverbs 29, 23, the last part of the verse 29, 23 B a man of lowly spirit gains honor. A man of lowly spirit gains honor. And then James 4.10, James 4.10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. The same thing also in first Peter five, six, humble yourselves, therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. So you humble yourself under God And he will lift you up. If you try to lift yourself up, you will be brought down. But if you wait and trust God and let God submit yourself to God, be obedient to God, wait on God, then God will lift you up in due time. Then also again in Luke 18, 14, Luke 18, 14 says in the, from the middle of the verse, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And as we had read previously in Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 and 27, it says, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. And then Matthew 18, four, Matthew 18, four, God, uh, I mean, Jesus said, therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest In the kingdom of heaven, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And I had shared with you previously in that same story that I have referred to several times about the the man who uh, wore this cloak and that the, the Holy Spirit had given to him. And then he could see the enemy pride. And then he asked the Holy Spirit, what is this cloak? The Holy Spirit said that is humility. And then I shared with you that as this man was walking amongst a a group of people on the level of salvation, and there were a lot of angels present there working, the angels started giving him a respect as he walked among them. And so he stopped one of them and he said, why are you giving me this respect? You did not give it to me the last time I was here. And the angel said to him, it's because of the cloak. Well, the cloak was the cloak of humility. And the angel said that cloak is the highest rank 
in the kingdom of God. That cloak is the highest rank in the kingdom of God. Well, that's exactly what Jesus said in Matthew 18, 4, 18, 4, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest, the greatest in the kingdom of God is the one who is humble. So humility is the highest rank in the kingdom of God. So the way up or the way for pro- to be promoted is to humble yourself. To humble yourself in the kingdom of God is the method for promotion. And then the opposite of it is true. The one who exalts himself, lifts himself up, he will be humbled. Of course, as we already read Matthew 20, 26, whoever no, excuse me, that's Luke 18, 14, Luke 18, 14, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And then Matthew 23, 12 says, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And then one more scripture actually is a parable passage that I want to remind you of in Luke chapter 14, Luke 14 Verses 7 through 11. When Jesus noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this man your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now we've all probably heard that story and yet we need to apply it to ourselves to not try to take the place of honor in different situations, settings, but to take the position of, of being unrecognized, not trying to draw attention to yourself so that God can give you that honor. Amen. So whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And then another reason why we need humility is that humility gives us the opportunity to die to the old man, as Paul refers to him, or the carnal man or the that flesh man. Humility gives us the opportunity to die or crucify the old man or the flesh man. And the more we die, the less troubled we are by those things that bother that fleshly old man, insults, persecutions, offenses. If your old man is dead, even to temptation, then you're not going to be bothered by it. If it's dead, So one answer to not getting offended is humility. You know, pride gets offended easily, but humility lays low. If you lay low, it doesn't bother you. But it's when you, quote, rise up, you know, we rise up on the inside. There's this indignation rising up on the inside when people say things or do things that bother us. It gives Satan an opportunity to slap us around. We get offended by it. We just get slapped by it. I think of it like one of those bouncing rubber balls. If you throw the rubber ball as one of those super bouncers, a super bouncer ball down. I don't remember what they're called, but I call them a super bouncer. So you throw that rubber ball down from a high point and you throw it hard, it will bounce very high. 
But what happens if you lay the ball on the ground? You lay the ball on the ground, and while it's lying on the ground, you hit it. Is it going to go anywhere? No. It's not going to bounce up because it can't go down any farther. It cannot bounce up because it cannot go down any farther. So if you've already laid low, crucified the flesh, you can't bounce up because you have already laid low. You can't go down any farther. You've humbled yourself before the Lord and before people. So there is no more rising up. Hallelujah. So if we lay low, then we don't rise up on the inside, getting offended, getting angry. The rising up is the flesh. It's the pride. The laying low is humility. So there is a process to learn humility, to learn to lay low and not get offended. Yes, it is a process. It's called crucifying the flesh, but laying low will keep you from getting offended. Praise God. Well, I'm out of time again. Let me remind you real quick that our next Victorious Faith Seminar in North Denver, Thornton is this Saturday, May 21st at 630. Come and join us at the Holiday Inn Express and Suites on the northeast corner of 120th and Grant Street, Saturday at 630 in Thornton. And join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.